Welcome to Norwich Cathedral. I am Herbert de Lozinger, a Norman by birth, and once the prior of the fine Benedictine monastery of Facon in Normandy. This Cathedral of Norwich is mine, bought and paid for. I founded it in 1096 on the Benedictine principles of worship, learning and hospitality. A difficult spiritual journey led to its creation. You see, I committed what I now see to have been a grave sin, the sin of simony, which is to say that I purchased my position as Bishop of Thetford, although I should add that this was common practice. I saw the error of my ways and went to Rome and humbly submitted myself to the Pope. The Pope was gracious and merciful and reinstated me to my post. As penance for my sin, I built this beautiful cathedral on the site of the Saxon Christchurch, the Holy Trinity. I'm sure you will agree that we Normans knew far more than the Saxons in the creation of cathedrals designed to reflect the glory of God. We faced the dark flint walls with the beautiful light stone from my native land, Caen in Normandy, stone from Lincolnshire, the Isle of Wight and Yorkshire were all used. It was not easy for us to bring the stone here. A special canal had to be dug to transport the stone closer to the building site. I gained permission from the King, as well as the Archbishop and the Pope, to move my seat to Norwich from Thetford. I could see that Norwich was already a successful trading and manufacturing centre with a good river route and in the midst of prime agricultural land. I didn't want my cathedral to be out in the sticks. Norwich also had a royal castle. Together the cathedral and castle stand as monuments to my ecclesiastical power and the secular power of the king. I set up a monastery to run the cathedral and installed my monks there. No monks are as holy as us Benedictines. Sadly, my cathedral was not completed until after my death. But it was a fine thing. The walls were brightly painted with biblical stories in order that men and women who could not understand our Latin services would still have religious instruction. The monastery always offered hospitality to the people of Norwich and travellers from elsewhere in keeping with Benedictine principles. If only the people of Norwich were as hospitable to us. In 1272, some callous men tried to burn down my beautiful cathedral. The riots provided an incentive for remodelling several buildings. The cloister took the longest to rebuild, over 130 years in fact. This area was central to the aspects of daily monastic life that were not divine services. Here, the Benedictine dedication to learning was expressed as it was a place for silent study as well as conversation. The numerous cupboards for storing books can still be seen in the east and south cloister walks. The cloister has the finest surviving series of story bosses in Europe. While the images of the cross and our saints in my church are intended to provoke a love of God, the Masons did not always content themselves with comforting religious themes. There are more fearful images, such as green men and dragons. They are intended to horrify and provoke contemplation of our sins and help us reflect on the health of our immortal souls. Peaceful, cloistered life was again shattered in 1381, when the troublesome peasantry rebelled against their lords. Thankfully, Norwich was blessed at that time with an old school bishop, Henry de Spencer, known as the Fighting Bishop, and he wasn't going to let these traitorous peasants get away with it. He came from a family of knights and was trained in arms before coming to the church, so he led the forces that crushed the Norfolk rebels. In thanksgiving for his success, he commissioned what we now call the dispenser retable. 
This is a glorious altarpiece, almost certainly the work of local craftsmen. It was discovered in 1847, being used as a table in an upper room of the cathedral. It is said that it was turned into a table to hide it from the destruction of the Reformation and Civil War, and indeed it is the only panel painting to survive from the original medieval furnishings. The long tradition of hermits and anchorites in Norwich would also produce a remarkable character in Julian of Norwich. Personally, I would never have allowed a woman in my diocese to spout theology, let alone write it down. In English of all languages, she had such shockingly tolerant views of sin. Worship as we knew it was about to change forever. The tumultuous history of my beautiful cathedral was not yet over, as the Protestant Reformation was coming our way. Many significant changes to the cathedral followed. Images had no place in the new form of worship. St. William's tomb was taken down in the move to dismantle main shrines. And as the force of Protestantism grew stronger under Edward VI, all shrines, altar tables, images and stained glass were ordered to be destroyed. Worship changed further still when Puritanism took hold in Norfolk during the Civil War. In 1643, a mob of Puritan city folk broke into the cathedral. The monsters even left their graffiti and a musket ball embedded in the tomb of Bishop James Goldwell. The mob removed pictures, vestments, statues, organ pipes and many books to the marketplace where they were burned on a bonfire. There were some bright lights to come, however. Admiral Nelson was schooled in Norwich at King Edward VI Grammar School, which to this day has its assemblies in the cathedral. Edith Cavell, a nurse and humanitarian, who was executed for assisting some 200 Allied troops during World War I, was born not far from Norwich, at Swartston. She is buried in my cathedral grounds and a graveside service is held in her memory every October. In 1930, the Friends of Norwich Cathedral was founded, and they have been a huge support to the Dean and Chapter, and have raised millions to keep my cathedral in its splendour and away from dishevelment. I am most satisfied with the way in which they have restored my cathedral to its traditional Benedictine principles of worship, learning and hospitality. The library is a magnificent example of the principle of learning. Not only does it have an impressive collection of books, but regular talks and lectures too. And now my cathedral has a purpose-built classroom in the new hostel to provide educational programs for the 8,000 school children that visit the cathedral every year. The new refectory and hostry continue the principle of hospitality. These new buildings were opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now let me hand you over to hear from the serving Dean of Norwich, the very Reverend Graham Smith. Whether you are local to our city or a visitor to the area, we welcome you to our magnificent cathedral. You will receive here the hospitality that we have shown to our visitors since the foundation of the building. And you are, of course, very welcome to offer your own prayers, to enjoy the peace and tranquility, and to join us in our daily services.